Wagner did the hardest fighting of the war for Russia. I mean, probably certainly of any battle and certainly of the last eight months of the war, at, you know, at, at least, which is the Battle of Bakhmut. Um, and and uh, fulfilled a job, a really grim as hell job for Russia to uh, fulfill a war aim. And essentially it was this. Um, last year in the first uh, you know month of the war and then you know and beyond that far too many um, young Russians young Russian males were dying and this threatened to make the war very unpopular and what is the you know what is one of the big uses of um, private military contractor mercenary groups like Blackwater and Din Corp and Wagner and so on one of them, I mean, there are many uses of them, obviously. First, you know, people can stuff each other's pockets. Um, uh, you can do things more off books, maybe half in, half out, uh, plausible deniability. But a really big thing is that it changes the way people look at the war and at casualties. Like, for example, um, I've been making this point lately. Um, in the, uh, in, the, in the two major wars that the U.S. has fought in the last 20 years, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, I, mean, I saw a, a study recently on this. Um, about 7,000, maybe slightly over 7,000 U.S. servicemen died and uh, over 8,000 private contractors for U.S. private contractors died. So that's 15,000, but we never see that number. And it's a different number than 7,000. You know, 7,000 is bad too. 15,000 is like, whoa. Um, it's never counted along with it. And, and yeah. you know, they're not real in American society. They're not officially really people. They're either people who, hey, it was your choice. You were there for the money. A lot of them are foreign nationals. We don't actually have the number because um, because some of them are foreign nationals and, and the reporting is different and that's by design. And so, in you know, Wagner did that sort of stuff for Russia, for some of its overseas ventures both to make money and to spread influence and to fight more. So they, you know, they, they were deeply involved in Syria. They're involved in uh, some conflicts in, in Africa. And when Wagner soldiers die, it's not a, it's not a PR problem uh, because Russians aren't outraged in the way that they would be or have been if it's servicemen. So, you know, as an example, so going fast forward, um, Late last year, when Prigozhin came out publicly, it was always they were always playing this game. But he came out publicly last year and said, "Yes, I'm the leader of, of Wagner." And they started showing him giving speeches in prison yards, you know, these like uh, Sparta 300 speeches, and uh, offering these people a chance to get out of prison, fight for Mother Russia. And what it wound up being was a way to attrit Ukrainian regulars using Russians who don't matter and don't contribute to the economy, that is convicts. Yeah. So thousands and thousands of, you couldn't do this to the regular army, at least that mechanism hadn't been worked out yet. Um, so you used Wagner for that. So Wagner, you know, became this fighting force. You know, again, we don't know how big it was, let's say anywhere from five to 10,000. It swelled up to 50 to 60,000. I'm throwing numbers, again, going by different studies, making my best guess, uh, of whom 40,000 were convicts. Um, it's possible that at least 10,000 of those convicts died, uh, 10 to 20,000, you know, uh, wounded, missing in action. Some were taken POW. A lot of them deserted. Um, but they killed a lot of um, Ukrainian regulars that Ukraine needs. That they need, that Ukraine needs to fight Russia, that Ukraine needs for its economy, and so it really was in the really grim math of this war, um, a successful operation in Bakhmut to attrit Ukraine and to haul them out some up somewhat before the big expected counteroffensive. And you've seen how the counteroffensive has not gone too well for Ukraine so far. You know, we, I'm not going to yeah. predict anything, but that is how it's gone so far. And once their job was done. And, and Prigozhin clearly had a sense this was going to happen, and so did his fighters. Once the job was done, they were going to be disposed of. And that's exactly what happened. A, a few, I, 
Yeah, I don't know when the first order came out or the rumblings of it, if it was a few weeks ago um, or even maybe even a bit earlier that Wagner was going to be folded in, you know, by decree into the Ministry of Defense. And this is what he was rebelling against. And his videos were getting more and more hysterical. I mean, you go back to even May, late May, when he was get, posting videos, also questioning the rationale for the war, saying, you know, the point of this war was to demilitarize Ukraine, quote unquote. And look what we did. We turned them into the, they're, they're now, nobody knew Ukraine before. Now they are the Romans or the Greeks. They're as famous as the Romans or the Greeks. They had 20,000 good fighters in February, 2022. Now they have 400,000. So we didn't demilitarize them. We militarized them. He's been saying this. He yeah. went to a new level, as Yasha pointed out. He definitely went to a new level. But he went to that new level last week after Putin officially came out with the Ministry of Defense, with Shoigu, and said, I'm putting my name behind this, that Wagner's done. And next, you know, by July 1st, everyone has to sign a new contract with the Ministry of Defense. Yeah. And, it, it, and so he lost his business. And he, you know, he yeah. saw people die. He was he, he was right up there in the front i mean you saw yasha that video again yeah. with all those corpses you know that, yeah, that yeah. He, he was just yeah, yeah he yeah exactly you know? he's just yeah, he's it's interesting he's taking a much more for a guy who's been stay, stayed in the shadows all these years and you know has de denied that he was any, has anything to do with the, the wagner group i mean he's gone completely you know personal and it's like and it seems like he hasn't really left the front you know he's just yes. been there and hanging out yeah i mean the videos are gruesome with him just walking around like a field strewn with corpses and he's like Almost like picking them up and like, look, look, yes. this is our boys. You know, this is what Shaigu is doing. It's almost you know, unbelievable. Not... Like I've no, never yeah, seen exactly. anything like that before. He is quite a character. I'll give him I mean, that. I mean, yeah, he is. He's like a character <laughs> that you'd never, you're never. I mean, I don't think Russia is ever going to produce characters like this. I mean, these people were yeah. like four in the nineties, essentially. Yeah. You know? And like, yes. And you know, I mean, just to go from just like a petty criminal in the eighties, uh, you know, in in the Soviet Union, to being this sort of like, basically a hot dog salesman, and you know, in this hot dog. In yeah. this, in this, like really gnarly, um, kind of outdoor market in in this right in the center of St. Petersburg, uh, kind of notorious for being, you know. Oh, you know which market he was. He oh was yeah, it's famous. Oh, okay. A Proxen, a Dvor. It's like oh, it's okay. uh, right yeah, off yeah. of yeah, it's right off of Nevsky yeah, Prospect. Nevsky, okay. it's, it's still even even today, it hasn't fully like reconstructed, and it is still a market, you know. And it's, right. I mean, so I can I can imagine in the '90s it must have been just a totally mobbed up. I mean, Petersburg yeah. was the roughest yeah. town in Russia then, you know, like and from and way, from going way from that to basically Moscow. starting these pretty successful kind of like '90s style restaurants to the point where you know George Bush, when George Bush and Laura Bush <laughs> came through, he made their tour of of Russia in 2002. You know, they were on one of his boats. They went to Prigozhin's <laughs> restaurant boats, and so you can I actually see Prigozhin always hanging out in the background yeah. with Putin. Um, uh, Ludmila, you know, Laura Bush just kind of hang out, be like, being like the kind of the master, you know, of the ceremonies. He's just sit, waiting on waiting on them, you know, to being a guy just running around the battlefield, just completely insane, you know, like picking up dead bodies that are ripped, ripped to shreds. It's, it's quite a trajectory, man. And like, and I, I do still, I mean, he's he, I think it did drive him crazy, probably, you know, um, because he's again, he he seemed to have a grievance with Putin directly. I mean, he didn't state it. But the fact that he was so reserved about kind of praising him and 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 in, in some kind of way yes. it showed me that he's, I mean, he I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, he he yeah, was he pissed off. He was pissed oh, yeah. with Putin.